Well, I want you to go ahead and put your seatbelt on because I've already ran one marathon this morning and I'm getting a second win. We're going to run again. You ready? Slap your neighbor and say, put it on. You may want to put your steel toes on. I didn't know God was going to be stepping on people's toes this morning, but he did. He stepped all over mine too, all right? Listen, I just uh, want to speak to you from my heart about what the Lord has set in my heart about words. Words are powerful, aren't they? Yeah. Your life will follow your words. Look at your neighbor and say, your life will follow your words. Not your neighbor's words. Not your wife or husband, friend, but your words, what you really believe. Well, I want to introduce to you four words in Hebrew. You didn't know we were going to do a Hebrew class today, right? Ancient Hebrew. There are four words in the English language that are not actually in Hebrew at all. So when you read the Bible and you see these words, I want you to translate it to this, all right? Yetzer means, um, we use that word mind, everywhere you see the word mind in the Bible, but it actually means the image of your imagination or um, your heart, the images that you carry in your heart, that's the word yetzer. So I want you to hold that. So the Bible says, out of the abundance of your yetzer, right, out of your imagination, the, the things that you're thinking on and the images that you form in your mind, your mouth begins to speak those things. Then there's the word debar. Somebody say debar. The way you use that word for word. And the, the word word, that's hard to say, isn't it? The word word means the reality of, the reality being experienced. So when you read the word of God, for the word read is kara or kara. Q-A-R-A. It means to encounter. When the Hebrew people would read the word, they would encounter. When they would read anything, they would encounter the, the author. So today, when we read the word of God, we are encountering, experiencing the reality of God. The reality of God. And then the word for to think that we use is called that, with double H's, Ash AV, or however you say that. Okay, and it means to design or to invent, to seal upon the hearts of the intention of our lives. So, whatever you think and whatever you're dwelling on, you are literally sealing it upon your heart. So, therefore, out of that, your mouth begins to speak. And the Bible says that whatever you say, your life will follow it. All right? I want you to think about the words that you've said this week. I want you to think about the conversations that you've had this week. And I want you to think about the reality of those words that you have experienced that maybe someone else has spoken over you. And maybe those words have hurt you. Y'all know that saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me? That's not true. You know what? Scientists will say this. They say that your brain registers the pain of words when you get hurt as the same if someone took a bat and hit you in the back. It hurts. And your words have the power to change your life. Your words have the power to change your neighbor's life. And I'm asking you today to take inventory of the words that you are speaking on a daily basis. Can you do that with me? See, whatever has entered the eye gate are the things that we speak. Whatever, wherever we are, um, from the, the moment we've been taught from a little child all the way up to now, whatever is entering in to our eyes, I call it the eyes of our soul, the eye gate, I believe what that is saying because my eyes are towards it, my face is towards it, I'm positioned in that, I grow up believing that, I can grow up and have a belief system that is not true. And we get that it becomes a reality in our life. And when it becomes a reality, the Bible says it becomes more than that. We think on it. We dwell on it, and then it's sealed upon our heart. And out of our heart, out of that will flow words, and our life 
will follow our words. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you are exactly where you are right now because of the words you've spoken over your life. Somebody say it's tight, but it's right. <laughs> hmm. So, you have to think about where are our words coming from? Where do words coming from? And every, the Bible talks about that we are to take words into captivity. We're to take the thought into captivity. But those words are coming in through our eye gate somewhere, and we're forming a belief system. We're forming an opinion about it. And the Bible says that you've got to take that thought before you say something. How many of y'all say things before you think? Am I the only one? The Bible t teaches us it's better to be quiet and to wait, think about it, and then, you know, analyze that thought. Where is this thought coming from? Take that thought into captivity and make it align with the Word of God. Luke 6 and 45 says this, The good person, out of a good treasure of his heart, what does heart mean again? What is it talking about? My, the, my mind, the images that have been impressed upon my heart, produces good. And the evil person, out of his evil treasure, produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. Your words are powerful. Your words are important. Your words have the power to change your situation. Your words have the power to change your circumstances. I want to talk to you today a little bit about how your life will follow your words. James 3 and 4 says this, look at the ships also. Though they are so large and driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. What that means is that your tongue has the power to turn the Titanic around. No matter what the storm is, no matter what the wind is saying, no matter how hard it is blowing, no matter what is going on in your life, you have the power to turn it around. Amen. Now, um, I need a person to help me this morning. Who do I want to get? Hmm. Why not you? Can you come? Can you take notes for him, please? Okay. Now, mm -hmm. stand right there in that square and don't move and face me. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Now, we're going to have fun today. Are you ready? You got your seatbelt on already, right? Okay, we know the story about Abraham and Lot, right? Well, God spoke to Abraham and said, Abraham, I want you to leave your family, and I want you to go to a faraway country to where I show you. God didn't even tell him where he was going to go. So as he packs his bags, he packs his cattle, and the Bible says that Abraham was rich. He was a wealthy man. He had a lot of cattle. And as he began to leave, Lot, his nephew, said, hey, I want to go with you. God never told Lot to go with him, number one. All right? But God, you know, you know, Abraham was like, okay, come on, you can go with me. But what happened is when they began to travel and they got to a place, they began to settle in a certain land, Lot began to, to be argumentative. And he began to say, hey, this, this land isn't big enough for your cattle and my cattle too. Right? So this is what the Bible says in Genesis 13, 10 through 13. And Lot lifted up his eyes, and he saw all the plains of Jordan. Let me backtrack a little bit. Abraham said first, we need to go our separate ways. And I'm going to give you the right to decide where you want to go first. Even though I've got way more than you do, and I'm older than you, I'm still going to let you go where you want to go, and I'm going to go my way, and you can go your way. Right? And this is what Lot did. He lifted up his eyes and he saw the plain of Jordan that is well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt as you go towards Zor. Then Lot chose for himself all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated from each other. Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent even as far as Sodom. But the men of Sodom were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord. See, this is what Lot did. Lot positioned himself, right, toward the world, 
toward the ways of the world, toward the evil, toward Sodom and Gomorrah, all right? So if I, if I face that, then whatever is going on in the world, it goes in my eye gate, I form an opinion about it, and then I make it a belief that it is sealed upon my heart to be true, and then I speak it, and then my life will follow it. And my life will follow the world, and I won't even know it. My eyes are just on it. And the world, pull on me a little bit. This is what the world is always doing. It's always pulling on you, right? So if you even turn towards it, it's like a magnet. It will pull you. And this is what the Word says about that. The way of the world. It's full of deceit. It's full of cursing, loose living, infidelity, drunkenness, anger, bitterness, and negativity, and so much more. You get the point, right? Right? The world has a different vocabulary. Everybody, anybody been in Walmart lately? The vocabulary changes completely. Just go to the school system and you'll hear the vocabulary. It's crazy. This is what it says in Romans 3, 13 and 14. Their words come from mouths that are like open graves. They use their lying tongues to deceive others. Their words are like the poison of snakes. Their mouths are full of cursing and angry words, all right? Now, this is what the Word says that the world is like. So if we face it, we will become like it. Now, God knows that we're in the world, but what does the Word say? We're in the world, but we're not of the world, right? So we, I'm not ignoring that all of that exists, but you have been positioned and you get to decide which way you want to face, all right? So the first way is the way of the world. And this is what the Lord is, was showing me while I was in prayer this week, that there's three ways that you can face and position yourself that will determine the outcome of your life. Proverbs 18 and 21 says this, The tongue can speak words that bring life or death, and those who love to talk must be ready to accept what it brings. So if you're speaking curses, then you must be ready to accept what it's bringing back to you. If you curse, the only person that it hurts is yourself because you're cursing yourself. Every little four-letter word and everything that's added to it, it will come back to you. And this word stands for you and me and the person beside you and the people in the world. So if you speak it, whatever you are speaking, get ready for it to come back to you. All right? Your words have consequences. The Bible says it's better to be, it's, it's better to not say anything at all, to be slow to speak and eager to listen. Right? The Word of God and if you speak the Word of God over your life, it has the power to change your life. But remember this. Anybody know the Miranda rights? Anybody? You have the right to remain silent. Look at your neighbor and say, you got the right to remain silent. All right? Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. That's the way it is. That's the way it is, because news travels. As I was saying this morning, this is the way the world will, will do, okay? The world, um, I'm gonna have uh, Maya, come, come here, baby. Maya's my friend, right? I'm gonna start talking to Maya. Maya, I am so upset. I can't believe that your mother, Carrie, bought coffee this morning for everybody else and she left me out. You know, I can't believe that. And I mean, she must not like me. She must love everybody else, and she doesn't like me. I'm assuming all these things. It's the way of the world, so I'm speaking death, right? But Carrie's my friend, right? So what Maya's going to do is go back and tell Carrie, you know what? Pastor Janet was talking about you today. And then you know what? Carrie's going to come to me and say, hey, Maya told me that you were talking about me, and this is what she said. I'm like, no, that ain't what I said. She misunderstood me, right? 
It will come back to you and it will bite you. And you know where it will bite you. you know, you've heard that saying. I'm going to say right there. Don't leave it, okay? Now, your words will come back to you. And I want to I share a few stories with you. Are you ready? Of some words that came back to some people. They prophesied these things over their lives and it happened just like they said it. Does anybody know John Lennon? Anybody know? They asked him in an interview one time, do you plan to leave show business anytime? You know how he answered this question? Unless I get shot or something. In a different interview, they said he said, I'll probably be murdered by a madman. And you know what? He was. He was murdered by a madman. Does anybody know Tupac? The rapper Tupac. Did I say it right? All right, just making sure. He was asked on an interview by PBS, where do you see your life over the next few years? You know what he said? Best case in a cemetery. In fact, two months before he died, he wrote a song, and in the lyrics it said, I've been shot and murdered. Two months later, he was shot and murdered on, Las, on the Las Vegas Strip. How about this? Does anybody know the baseball player Frank Pastore? There was a radio interview with the former major league pitcher Frank Pastore. After his baseball career ended, he showcased his talents as a sports celebrity on a daily radio talk. The last show he taped featured a discussion of mortality. And Pastore said this, you guys know I ride a motorcycle, right? At any moment, especially with the idiot people who cross the diamond lane into my lane, at any minute, I could be spread all over the 210. The day after the show, when he got finished that same day, he hopped on his motorcycle. He proceeded down his normal route on 210. And unfortunately, this time another vehicle swerved head on and hit his motorcycle, which led to his death. Words are powerful. Anybody know Jimi Hendrix? Jimi Hendrix, another crazy story about how powerful words are. He wrote a song in September 1965 titled The Ballad of Jimmy. The lyrics included, many things he would try, for he knew soon he'd die. Now Jimmy's gone, he's not alone, his memory still lives on. Five years, this he said, he's not gone, he's just dead. Exactly five years, on September the 18th, 1970, Hendrix died just as he declared. See, the Bible says in Proverbs 6 and 2, you are snared by the words of your mouth. I want to ask you this. What kind of music are you listening to? What is going in the eye gate? What is going into your ears? Are you singing, there's a tear in my beard? Are you singing, I'm about to lose my mind? Because you might just lose your mind. See, the world, there's music that will pull us. Pull on me again. It will pull us. And then before I know it, I'm in it and I'm singing like the world and I'm talking like the world and I don't even realize it. And the Bible says I'm snared by them. I trap myself by the words that I say, the songs that I sing, the music that I listen to, the people I hang out with. We're snared by it. Mm. You ready? If you're wanting to lose weight, I'm not, I'm not looking at Pastor Kerry, okay? And you're always saying, I've always had a slow metabolism. I'll never lose weight. Everybody in my family is overweight. Nobody in my family has ever prospered at anything. I'll always be in debt. I'll always be by myself. I'll never get ahead. I'll never get out of debt. Guess what? The Bible says you are snared by the words that you say. And if you're not careful, you'll prophesy your future by the things that you are saying. 
How many people want to die early? I don't think so. How many people want to prophesy their own death? How many people want to prophesy sickness and negativity in your life? No way. You know what? I look at my husband and I said, baby, you know what? I see you and me. I'm 80. You're 86, almost 87. We're at the table. We're drinking coffee. We're talking about our grandchildren. We're talking about Reed's wife, good things. Rhett's and Ryan's wife and how blessed our children are and how blessed our grandchildren are and we're just talking about how good God is. I already see it because I want my life to follow my words. So if you want your, you know, you got to see the big picture. What do you want your life to look like? Then we need to change our vocabulary and start speaking those things. I don't even think about dying. It's going to happen to all of us. We need to get busy thinking about living. It's powerful. You're snared by the words that you say. All right? I need another person. Carrie? You just seem to be there, so I'm trying not to use my children this time. Just use my husband. All right. So the second way is the way of man, all right? And the way of man, ooh, is based on our circumstances. We murmur and we complain. I'm not talking about you, by the way, okay? I just want you to know that. He doesn't do that. And respond to what our circumstances say. We base our happiness on whether something good is happening in our life or not. See, the way of man is what I feel and I'm looking at my circumstance, and I respond to what that circumstance is saying. You know, I remember when, when Rhett was really, really sick, you know, we were in the hospital, and I got on the phone, and I was talking to somebody, they wanted to know what was wrong, and I said, well, you know, Rhett's body is not absorbing food, and, and all these things are happening, and he heard me say that. He said, Mama, my body is absorbing food. Stop saying that. So you got to speak things that are not as though they were. But sometimes, this is the real thing, when life looks you in the eyeballs, really looks you in, and you feel it, and Satan is painting a picture for you, he has come in, you know what, that's what he does, he paints a picture for you, and it feels real, it looks like it's real, and we give into it, and we start speaking it over our life. I'm guilty of that, I have done that before. You know what, and that's the way of man. This is what the Word says about that. I love, you know, um, what, what the Lord said to Jeremiah. Let's see, where I lost my place. No, I'm over here. I'm the way of man. Philippians 2, 13, and 15. Yes, it is God who is working in you. He helps you to want to do what pleases Him. And He gives you the power to do it. Isn't that powerful? Do everything. Somebody say Everything. Everything without complaining or arguing. Do every. Is it possible that you could go through your life and not argue? It takes two to argue. I, I'm, I know verse 14 is there. I wish it wasn't either because it, it gives me an excuse to argue and complain, right? But it's there. Do everything without complaining and arguing. And this is what he said. The reason why I want you to do that, because I don't want your words to come back and bite you. I don't want people to be talking about you. I want you to be pure children of God without fault. But you are living with evil people. You're, they're all around you. The world is all around us. They have lost their sense of what is right. Among those people in the world, you are shining like a light. You're in the world, but you're not of the world. But we think as Christians, okay, I'm not in the world. I'm doing fine. But we look at our circumstances and we speak what our circumstances are saying. We don't ignore what our circumstance is. Because our circumstance is there. If you're sick in your body, you're sick in your body. You don't ignore it right? But you've got to learn, just like I have to learn, to speak those things that are not as though they were and have faith in God. This is what Hebrews says. It says, therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you hear my voice, 
Do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, in the day of trials in the wilderness, where your fathers tested me. They tried me. They saw my works for 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said, they always go astray in their hearts, and they have not known my ways. I want you just to really encounter what this word is saying right here. The Holy Spirit, somebody say Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is here today, and he is speaking to us. And he says, if you have ears to hear what I am saying, do not harden your heart. Do not go astray. Is it for 40 years the children of Israel, day after day, saw God provide for them? He split open the Red Sea. He made a way where there wasn't a way. They walked on dry ground. He performed miracles after miracles. The Lord led them and guided them. He fed them. He, he gave them everything that they needed. And as soon as they hit another pothole, and as soon as they got discouraged again, they begin to give into that circumstance. And this is what he says. How is it that you can walk with me for 40 years and you still don't know my ways? You still can't see me. All you can see is your circumstance. Oh, that's all you can see. He said, so I was angry with that generation and I swore my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. If you listen to your flesh, your flesh every time will go back to that self-centeredness to give in to the way that you feel. Amen? Amen. This is the third thing. The way of heaven. The way of heaven. Let's see. Who do I want to get for the way of heaven? Jorge. Woohoo! Come on, Jorge. The way of heaven. Now, the way of heaven is based off God's words and his promises that he has for you. You believe what God says. The more you spend time with God and you are facing God, he is pouring into you. Your eye gate is open and those words flow into you into your heart it's sealed upon your heart it's something that you really believe because this is the truth this is not the truth this is not the truth but God's ways are the truth amen so you know sometimes life happens to us right and there's times that we get turned around and I feel the world pulling me and I feel my circumstances pulling me. You know what you gotta do? You gotta reposition yourself. You gotta get your heart back in line with God again and reposition yourself to what his word is saying. He said, if you have ears to hear me, hear what the Lord is saying today, not what your circumstance is saying and not what the world is saying. Hear what heaven is saying about your life today. This is what God was saying to Jeremiah. Jeremiah was talking to the, God, to the Lord, and this is the conversation, Jeremiah 1, 4, 19. The word, somebody say Debar, the reality of, all right? The reality of the Lord, the reality of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Now get this, God's speaking to him. He said, before you were born, I knew you. I knew the plans that I had for you. I have already appointed you. I know the end already. And what did Jeremiah say to him? Oh, oh God, hang on, hang on a minute, God. I, I can't do that. I don't know how to speak. I'm too young. And this is what the Lord said to him. Do not say I am too young. He said, I'm going to send you out. You go where I send you and you say what I say, but don't say I'm too young. It's like God was saying, zip it, stop. Don't say it. 
Don't say it. Don't keep saying, I'll never lose weight. Don't keep saying my marriage is falling apart. Don't keep saying I'm struggling with fear. Don't keep saying I'm struggling with my finances. Don't keep saying everything's falling apart in my life. No, you got to say the opposite of what's going on. Right? God says, zip it. Don't say that. He said, don't be afraid of them. Don't be afraid of the world. Don't be afraid of your circumstance. Don't be afraid that's, that's before you. He said, I am with you. I will go with you, and I will rescue you. And he said, this is a declaration from the Lord. I love what verse 9 says. Verse 9 says, then the Lord, can you imagine this with me? Jeremiah is talking to the Lord. And the hand of God reached out and touched his mouth and said, now, I have put my words in your mouth. Have any of y'all ever had your mama to reach her hand out to your mouth? Some of y'all go, "Mm mm-hmm. Now, I don't know how you imagine that, but I imagine it like, pop. Don't say that. Don't say that, Jeremiah. Sometimes all you can feel and and you need need something to get your attention. And when his hand came down and just popped him in the mouth and say, now, say what I say. Do what I do. Say the way of heaven. Move in the way of heaven. Say what the Word of God says about you and your life and your family. Do you know what the Word of God says about you? That all of his promises are yes and I said all of his promises are yes and amen. They're yes and what? And who are they for? It's for you and your family and your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren. For the Bible says a thousand generations. It will last a thousand generations. It's time for you and I now to take inventory of all of the words that we are speaking. And we need to speak life over our situation. This is what David said. I will say of the Lord. I will say of the Lord, he is my strong tower. See, David said and God did. David said and God did. You know what? When we face a circumstance and we face things, we look at it and say, you know what? That's what my circumstances say right now in this very moment, and it's how I feel. But, Lord, your word says this. I come boldly. See, the word says that the door is open. I can come boldly now to the throne room of God, the throne room of heaven. How many people know that Jesus is not a baby anymore? He's not in a manger. He's not on the cross anymore. He's not in the grave anymore. But he is seated high in a heavenly place. He is right here. He is interceding for you and me. And the Holy Ghost is in this earth. And he is pulling. And he is drawing us. But we are standing right here. We get to make the decision. Which way do I want to face myself? Where do I want to point myself? Do I want to be offended? Do I want to curse? Or do I want blessings to flow out of my life? Or do I want prosperity to flow out of my life? What do I want in my life? Thank you. Give it up for them. Thank you so much. See, Romans 14, 4 and 17 says, As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him who believed, God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. 1 John 5 and 14 and 15 says, Since we have this confidence, we also can have a great boldness before him. If we present any request agreeable to his will, he will hear us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we also know that we have obtained what the request of that we ask of him see when we're faced this way and I have a need in my life Lord I have a hospital bill or God I have a, a my power bill is not paid this week but your word says that you will supply all of my needs so I'm coming boldly into your throne room Lord I've been sick in my body this week but I resist the devil I resist sickness in Jesus name I plead the blood of Jesus over my life I proclaim and declare that my immune system is strong that my body 
body is fighting off disease, that my body is fighting off infection, that my body is fighting off colds and viruses and flu. I come before your throne room, God. You said in your word, if I ask, I shall receive it. Lord, I got a mountain in my way. So I come to you, God, and I declare today that this mountain is moved in Jesus' name. Lord, your word says, I come and I bring you into remembrance of what your word says. This is what you said. So I am coming and the Bible says we can obtain it. See, our life will follow our words. What are you saying? What are you giving into? What is coming against you? What is your warfare? Satan hates you. Can I tell you something? He ain't never going to leave you alone. You always going to have warfare. All the time. You take one step forward, the devil's going to knock you three steps back. But the Bible says a good man will get up seven times. He'll keep getting up. You keep getting up. You take a step and one step in front of the other and you keep going and your circumstances will pull you back and say, hey, why don't you believe like this? Because your circumstances are saying these things about you. God, I come to you again. Lord, I don't understand it. I can't see it. I can't feel you. I don't know where you are, Lord. I'm confused, but Lord, I declare right now in, the Je in Jesus' name, I resist confusion because I know where that comes from. I resist fear because I know where that comes from. I come boldly to your throne today to receive your love. I make an exchange with you today, Lord. I come to you believing, God, that you will give me everything that I need to live this life. Lord, your words says that in you I can have an abundant life right here on this earth. So Lord I'm going to walk in your abundance. I'm going to walk in forgiveness. I'm going to walk in healing. I'm going to walk in joy. I'm going to walk in prosperity. I'm going to walk in abundance and blessings in my life. You got to speak it out loud. You give birth to what you say. I want you to imagine if you keep saying the same thing over and over, you will give birth to it and you'll have a little baby of negativity and it will keep nagging you, pulling on you, cast down darkness, cast it down. The Bible says this, if you resist him, he will flee. But if you sit there and you keep inviting him in, you cross your legs. Fear has become a part of who I am and my identity. Or struggle has become a part of my identity. Or sickness has become a part of my identity. God says, no, that's not who you are. I've called you righteous. I've called you towards heaven to look your face towards me. Look towards me. I hear the Lord loud and clear this morning. He is saying we need to pick this foot up and reposition ourselves and look again where Jesus is. He is, he is seating high on a throne. He is interceding for you and me. What is he saying? He is saying, I know they're gonna make it. I hope they can get it. I hope they can get the reality of my word because if you open up this Bible and you read it for real and let it become a part of who you are, it will change your life. It will change the course of your life. It will change everything. It will change people around you. See, the word is powerful. Mark eleven twenty three 23 says this. Listen to the truth I speak to you. If someone says to this mountain with great faith and having no doubt, mountain be lifted up and thrown into the midst of the sea and believes that whatever he says it will happen, it will be done. It will be done. Psalm 27, 13 says, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness while I'm still alive right here in the land of the living. Job 22 and 28 says this, you will also declare a thing and it will be established for you. You will declare a thing. What are you declaring? What is being established in your life? Are you murmuring? Are you complaining about what you don't have? Or can you look to Jesus and see what you do have? 
Can you look around your circumstances now and see what you do have? And then speak life over those things that are dead in your life. Speak life over your marriage. Speak life over your children. Speak life over your car. Speak life. It will change your life. Declare it. He said, so light will shine on your ways. Proverbs 13 and 12 says this, unrelenting disappointment leaves you heart sick. But a sudden good break can turn your life around. Somebody say, I'm ready for a sudden good break in my life. Thank you, God, for a breakthrough. Thank you for a suddenly season coming in my life. I thank you, Lord, that my promises are this year. I thank you that today, Lord, I will walk in the promises that you have for me. Psalm 138 and 8 says this, The Lord will accomplish what concerns me. The Lord will accomplish it. Philippians 4 and 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. You've been hanging your head low. You've been saying you can't do it. But I've come to call the devil a liar today and to say that the word of God cannot lie. He said that you can do all things through Jesus Christ who will make you strong in every situation. Every valley that you walk through. Proverbs 11 and 25 says, Those who live to bless others will have blessings heaped upon them. And the one who pours out his life to pour out blessings will be saturated with favor. Favor. Deuteronomy 28 and 8. The Lord will command. Somebody say the Lord will blessings on you and in your storehouses and in all to which you set your hand and he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. When is the last time you woke up and you said, Lord, I thank you that everywhere my feet go today, I am blessed. I thank you, Lord, that I am taking the world by the tail. You and me, God, with you and me, I can do anything. I thank you that prosperity belongs to me. I thank you that I got sales today. I thank you that I got a bonus. I thank you that I am going to get a promotion. I'm going to get a raise. Somebody, nobody don't want a raise in here? You got to say it. You got to speak it. You got to speak life. When you get up in the morning, you say mouth, you're going to say what the Word of God says. Feet, wherever you go, you are blessed. You are highly favored. Maybe you're in a valley. Maybe you're in situations. And you know what? When you're in, in valleys, it's really, really hard to do things like that and say, you know, to speak the opposite. But can I tell you, I've been there. When the devil paints you a picture and he shows you the worst case scenario and it feels real, open your eyes and see Jesus in it. Because when that happened to us and I saw the picture that the enemy was painting for me, I saw Jesus and I felt him walk into our room and I was having a nightmare and Carrie, he laid his hands on me, he began to pray. And I was screaming because of a nightmare and the, what the enemy was showing me. And he was showing me how he was going to kill Rhett. And then I said, and then the Lord came to me and said, have another thought. And I had the complete opposite. I saw him alive and married and with children and prosperous in his life. And I began to rejoice. My heart began to fill up with joy. So if you have a negative thought and something is pulling your mind, you know, reposition yourself. Turn back to the eyes of the Lord and begin to see what the truth is and have another thought because the thoughts of heaven are absolutely great towards you. He says, I know the plans that I have for you. They're good. They're for you to have a great future, for you to prosper, and for you to succeed in your life. This is what the Lord says. Woo! Lord, I'm sweating. Second Chronicles. But as for you, be strong. Do not give up, for your work will be rewarded. 
The Lord is saying, hear the word of the Lord today. He said, don't give up. Be strong. Everything that you are doing right now, God is taking note of it. And he said, the work of your hands shall be rewarded. Now, I want to tell you the story about Ezekiel. Then we're going to close. Anybody remember Ezekiel? Ezekiel was a prophet. He was walking with the Lord. And one day... The Bible says that the Lord led him to a valley. And when we're in a valley, we say, the devil brought me here. The devil's doing this to me. Can I tell you that the devil is not the author of your life? He doesn't have the pencil in his hand and writing your story out. No, God does. God is writing your story. And he says, when you go through the valley, I'm going to lead you in it. I'm going to lead you in the wilderness. I'm not going to leave you. I'm going to be right beside you. And when this is what happened. Not only did he lead him to a valley, he led him to a valley of death and dry bones where death was all around him. But you know what he said? The Spirit of the Lord was upon me. The Spirit of, I felt the hand of the Lord upon me in my valley, in my pain, in suffering, in sickness, in death, in my mind, the Lord is with me. The Lord. The Lord is with me. I imagine that maybe Ezekiel could look at this and say, okay, God, I'm, there's death all around me. But you know what the Lord said to him? Ezekiel, son, can these dry bones live? I could just hear the voice of the Lord now with joy because God knows what's ahead. He knows what he's about to do. He is saying, hey, Christy, can these dry bones live? Hey, Carrie, can these dry bones live? Hey, you, all of you, can these dry bones live? The Lord is coming to you saying, hey, can I, won't I? And you know what he said? Only you know, God. Only you know. And then, this is what the Bible says. He said, turn and prophesy. Turn and prophesy. I want you to say what I'm saying. The word of the Lord, the reality of God came to him saying, say what I say. And he began to prophesy. He said, I saw bones come together. There was a sound. He prophesied to the wind. And he said, dry bones, come together. And they came together. And then he said, hey, can they live? Can they breathe? He said, prophesy. Position yourself and prophesy. Speak. Ezekiel had to open up his mouth and speak the reality of God. And then all of a sudden, there was a mighty rushing wind that came in the valley, in the low place of Ezekiel's life, in the middle of, of death, when he was prophesying, when it seemed like nothing was happening, he began to prophesy and the wind came. The wind of the Lord came and he breathed life. And guess what? The Bible said they stood up a great, exceedingly great army. That's what I'm seeing in you today. I come to tell you today, the words, the negative words, the negativity, the curses that have been spoken over you, I come to cancel 
the assignment of the devil today and to tell you that your God has great plans for you. I can see in the spirit right now that there's been words that have stung you and the stinger is still inside. But I see the hand of the Lord and he is reaching out and he has taken that stinger out that those words will fall to the ground. Those negative words. He is saying now, this is what I want you to do. Don't go back. What I have just healed you from, don't turn and don't go back. Don't go back thinking the same old way. Wash your mind with my word, the Lord says, and believe that I will do what I said I will do in your life. Believe it. See, the more that I'm facing him, and by the way, his face is towards you. Just want you to know that. His face is always towards you. And if you turn and finally look, you can see him. And then it becomes my reality. Because now it's going in the eye gates of my soul. It is penetrating. It is sealed upon my heart. That if my God is for me, then who can be against me? God, if you walk before me, then there's no devil in hell that can stop what you are doing. Now, I'm telling you that your life will follow your words. And if you look towards him and you keep speaking his words, your life will change. Amen. Do you believe that this morning? You have the power to change your life, to change those lives around you. Speak the word of God and speak life. I want to ask you to stand to your feet as we begin to close. And if you'll bring those lights down. And I just want to prophesy over you and I want to speak to you. The Lord says that, you know, that he wants to bless you. He wants to do good things. But there's some requirements that he has for you. And see, David prayed a prayer like this. Lord, create in me a clean heart. Let the meditation of my heart and the words of my mouth be acceptable in your sight. Wash me, God, with your word. Now this morning I want to ask you, if you need something from God, anything at all, you need him, I want you to get out of your seat and run to the altar right now because Jesus is here. The Holy Spirit, he says, if you have an ear to hear, come. What do you need from me today? I'm available. I am listening. I am open to you. Whatever you need, fall on your face. Fall on it. This is the house of prayer. This is the, the Holy Spirit is going to flow through here. He is going to wash you clean. Come on, let's begin to praise Him. Thank you, Jesus. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. May the words of my mouth be acceptable in your sight wash me with your word and cleanse me from my sin breathe new life in my lungs so i can live again i speak
in this house the enemy has been attacking you with fear and I hear the Lord saying reposition yourself because I'm about to pour my love all over you it's love that will cast away fear right now in the name of Jesus open your arms receive his love it's falling down like rain I see it in the spirit falling down Receive it, receive it. No more fear, no more fear. Holy Ghost, breathe, breathe, Holy Ghost, right now, Jesus. Breathe. I speak life. Every negative word that has been spoken against you, said God says, don't worry about it, I'm condemning it. I will take vengeance, you leave it alone, walk away, forgive, and look to me and see what I will do, see what I will give, see what I will do in your life. Leave it alone. Yes, fear is leaving. Fear is leaving. No more fear. No more fear. No more anger. Someone struggling with anger, God says, I'm taking it out. I'm taking that sting out. No more anger. If you're struggling with anger, give it to him this morning. Don't hang on to it. All right? Because he wants to take it from you. This is the place where David said it was the, in the house of the Lord that I found my answer. And I found him. And he washed me. And I had the answer. God says, I'm giving you the answer right now. Give it to me. There's a great exchange that is taking place right now. Come before his throne room. And pray this with me one more time. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. May the words of my mouth be acceptable in your sight. Wash me with your word and cleanse me from my sin.
will get you distracted. It will tell you that God ain't for you. It, your complaining and murmuring will remind you of your circumstance. But I want your mouth, I'm going I'm to be like the Lord and just pop that mouth and lay that his hands will just lay upon your mouth and say, don't say that. Speak life. Speak life. Speak life over your situation. All right? Can you do that? All week long. And I pray that your week turns into two weeks. And two weeks into two years. And two years into 20 years. And for the rest of your life, that you will live the life of speaking life. Amen. You believe that? I love you this morning. I pray that you go, that this word be sealed upon your heart. Thank you, Holy Ghost, that you're sealing this word upon our hearts. And may you leave here.